Hi friends, welcome to week six, yes. some sweater weather week six or your fall colors. We are ready, we are dressed for the occasion. This week is a beautiful continuation of last week where we left off in Matthew 17 with the transfiguration. And so I'm not sure if you are a roller coaster fan or not, but both of them are no's. I'm a yes all the way through. You put me on the highest, fastest roller coaster, most turns. Um, and that's, that's what I love, but that's also how I felt as we studied and wrote and prepared for this week. So um, I had the honor of getting to write part of this and Wendy um, helped me as well. And so there was definitely a roller coaster of emotions. I know even whenever I met with Wendy, there were times where I cried just of, I can't believe we're seeing Jesus and all that he's going to go through in this week. And so if you have your study guide and took a glance ahead, you may see we go from Jesus riding in on the donkey in John 12 all the way to Acts 2, the day of Pentecost. And so Wendy will explain a little more about that in this video as well. Yeah, Han, I'm not a roller coaster person at all. Like the, the little butterflies you get, like even when you go over it in a car. Or a big giant butterfly. Yeah, I just like can't do it. So I'm excited for the roller coaster of this study though, as we enter in. So this week is where we see the promise is fulfilled. And so we're very excited about that. We get to share the best news in the whole wide world. And Hannah, you mentioned that you wrote the daily teachings this week, which I'm excited that you're writing once again. Very exciting. And Hannah, you actually say you, um, you find yourself in one of the figures that we're going to read about. And so I'd love for you to talk a little bit about that. Yes. So... I'm just gonna ask for a little grace. One of our family values at Proverbs is we extend grace because we desperately need right. it. And so I'm gonna ask for grace of who I relate to because we talk about Pilate this week. And so he was the Rome, he was Rome's governing leader during this time. And he's probably not the best person to relate to. Um, he's definitely not like maybe we would say Paul who wrote most of the New Testament or Jesus. Um, <laughs> But You're I, honest, yeah, and we love that about you. Thank you. And so I find Pilate incredibly relatable. And so it boils down to a couple of things, one of which is he is a people pleaser. He yeah. He's a people pleaser. And so he does not want Jesus's blood on his hands, yet he does not want to make the crowds angry with him. And so we can learn from Pilate this week. We see this tension in him. We read about it. And I love that the Lord, um, that God includes this in the story of Jesus. And so I think what's amazing is the fact that Pilate's decision ultimately helped fulfill the plan of God from the beginning. That's good, Hannah. See, I think I actually relate to Pilate as well. So look at yeah, us. Yeah, there. The same. All yeah. right. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, today we have back with us. You may have seen her already. Her name is Wendy. She is our biblical content specialist with online Bible studies, part of the content team for the 40-day study. And she's actually going to explain what the Pentecost is. And for some of you, you may have never heard this word before. But simply put, it's when the Holy Spirit was given to the disciples, and this is a big deal. And so, Wendy, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, I'm really excited to talk about <laughs> this. It. So, though we think of Pentecost as the New Testament, right? It's a New Testament celebration, but it has its roots in the Old Testament. And so that's where we're going to start. In the Old Testament, Pentecost referred to the second of three great Jewish feasts celebrated by the Israelites. The Israelites celebrated this feast on the 50th day after Passover mm. to present sort of the first fruits of their harvest to God. And it's also known, gonna give you a word here, Feast of Weeks or Shavuot in Hebrew. Shavuot. Yes, very good, you get an A in Hebrew. Pentecost comes from the Greek word Pentecostos, which means 50th. 50th. Good job, girls. <laughs> The, we didn't even, they didn't even know I was going to ask that. Yes, we the, this Jewish holy day held significance in the New Testament as well because during the Jewish celebration of Shavuot or Pentecost, God moved in a mighty way by pouring out his Holy Spirit on the early followers of Jesus. Hmm. So this was the very same spirit that Jesus promised in John 6, 14 through 16 when he told the disciples, um, wait, because... I will send a helper mm. called the Spirit of Truth to be with you after I'm gone. And at that time, I'm sure the disciples had no idea what he was talking about because he was still there, right? Mm. But I'm thinking those very same disciples 
remembered back to those words when he fulfilled them hmm. weeks later at Pentecost. Wow. Many of Jesus' followers scattered after his crucifixion, but 40 days after Jesus rose from the dead and 10 days, do the math girls, <laughs> 10 <laughs> days after he ascended into heaven, 50 days total, did y'all notice the number? Yes. yes. What is it? 50. Good. <laughs> 120 of Jesus' followers gathered in Jerusalem. Wow. And it was there, in that place, that God performed a mighty, miraculous mm. work. So, Kendra, rather than me sort of summarize it, will you just read it from Acts 2, 2 yes, to 4, please? I would love to. So it says, And sudden, suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested to each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Mm. The Holy Spirit, the rushing wind, the flaming tongues of fire came and filled and birthed the church of the living God. A church called by God to be pillars of truth, mm vessels of love to a lost and broken and mm -hmm. hurting world. And that's us. Yeah. I mean, y'all, that is us. We are the church yes. of the living God. We are the pillars of truth. Mm. We are the vessels of love. God sent his spirit as a life-changing, faith-transforming gift. And that gift is the very same spirit, now get this, who was present when God laid the foundations of the earth, mm -hmm. who conceived Jesus, who indwelled and empowered Jesus during his ministry on earth. And it's the same spirit who enabled Peter, who weeks before had denied Jesus mm. three times, to stand before thousands of people, profess Christ as Savior, and lead 3,000 of them mm. to Christ. I have chills. Yeah. Mm. That spirit, that spirit, friends, that power lives and moves in you and me, mm. in every one of us. Jesus didn't limit his gift to the early church or to great educated holy people of God. Right. God sent his Holy Spirit to indwell everyone who calls Jesus Lord and Savior. God the Son sent God the Spirit to fulfill our every longing. His sweet, sweet spirit is the vessel through which he marks and seals us as his own, mm. through which he teaches and reminds us, infuses us with wisdom and knowledge and revelation and understanding, convicts us of our sin, right. which is hard, mm -hmm. guides us into all truth, and fills us with the fruit of his spirit. Mm -hmm. Paul tells us God's spirit in us enables us to do exceedingly abundantly above mm -hmm. what we could ever ask or imagine. That's Ephesians 3.20. And what I find to be the very best part of this gift, that through his spirit, Jesus empowers us to be not just victors, mm -hmm. not just conquerors, but more than conquerors because he is alive in us. Amen. Amen. So good, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, we can pause or we can stop there because that is just so great, Wendy. Thank you. Um, you taught me a lot in this study. I know again that Wendy is a friend of yours, even if you've never met. And so, um, but so is the Holy Spirit. And so I love that the Lord sent the helper. Yeah. And so no matter what your circumstances look like, if you feel isolated or alone or in despair, you are not alone as a believer of Christ because the Holy Spirit is dwelling within you. The helper is with you. And so friends, this week we covered from Pilate to the Pentecost. And so we've done a lot in a few short moments and a few short minutes. Yeah. And so now we get to transition to one of our favorite parts of each week. So Joel has done an incredible job at this point. Yeah. I think he's hit every single he one. He has hit every single one. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Great Perfect. job, Joel. We're proud. So Joel, let me ask, what is the significance in the veil being torn from top to bottom in the temple when Jesus died? Good luck. The temple was one of the most important, if not, I would argue, the most important symbol uh, for the people of Israel. Inside of the temple, there was this place called the Holy of Holies. And in the Holy of Holies, it was believed that the very presence of God dwelt inside of the Holy of Holies. But people, because of sin, could not enter into the Holy of Holies. And so there was this, uh, this curtain. It's a brilliant curtain, and it's actually blue, purple, and embroidered into the curtain um, is actually cherubim. Now, I want to go all the way back to Genesis chapter 1, 
one, two, and three. Remember, when in the Garden of Eden, God's presence is inside of Eden. God walks with Adam and Eve. When Adam and Eve go and are banished out, when they're sent out, what guards Eden? Two cherubim. What guards the Holy of Holies inside of the temple? A veil that has cherubim that are embroidered inside of it. So when the veil is torn between two, it is an indication that no longer are the people of God separated from the presence of God because now the Spirit of God indwells inside of them. Okay, he got it at exactly at one minute. I'm so excited he about out the colors of the veil, which yeah. right when he hit the colors, I was like, okay, like, yeah. I don't know. Right. And it was amazing. Yes. He truly is. I mean, he is so knowledgeable. It's yes. great. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, we talked about the Great Commission, which is for us to go and make disciples. From Acts 2, the Holy Spirit that's given to the disciples is also given to us, just like mm -hmm. Hannah talked about, just like Wendy talked about. So we want to ask you a question. Who can you share this message with? Mm -hmm. Who needs the hope of Jesus Christ in their life? We want to encourage you to go and share it with all of your friends, um, and we're excited for you guys to do so. So with that, we have a saying around here, and so I'd love if we could all say it together, okay? Yes. It is when you know, know the, the truth, truth and live the truth, truth it, it changes, changes everything. everything. Have a great week six, everyone. Bye, y'all.